Your evening news presented by Edition Financial Credit Union. Count us in. The eye of Hurricane Idalia has left uh, the state of Florida. The storm is moving away and the recovery efforts are underway. Hurricane Idalia brought strong winds, heavy rainfall and devastating flooding to an area of Florida that has never seen a storm of this strength. Tonight, a look at Idalia's impact. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us this evening. I'm Curtis McLeod in for Greg Angel. And I'm Tammy Fields. We hope that you're safe and with power at this hour. Hurricane Adalia is now a tropical storm. It has left our state and we're looking at the path of destruction left behind in its wake. Our team coverage continues all across the state as the storm moves away. We're taking a look at the damage left behind Idalia and the recovery efforts currently underway as Floridians are now picking up the pieces. First, though, we want to get you, of course, the very latest on this now tropical mm -hmm. storm, Idalia, and its strength and just kind of where things stand. Let's go ahead and head on over to the Weather Center right now with dual certified meteorologist Zach Covey joining us right now. Hey, Zach. And a good evening to both of you. Good evening at home. Send Central Florida, do it with me here. Let's take a deep breath because Tropical Storm Medallia is now out of Central Florida and the largely those impacts finally coming to an end. Here's the very latest as of 5 p.m. The latest information, 70 miles per hour, Tropical Storm Medallia working its way just west of Savannah, Georgia at this hour, bringing the worst impacts to the coastal Carolina chain. That will continue through the overnight hours before it slides out to sea and eventually eventually may tangle with Bermuda heading into the weekend. Here's what we know that westerly flow will continue to bring us a few showers and storms through Friday. We'll talk more about the impact as we head throughout the next couple of days coming up. All right, Zach, thank you so much. Our weather experts like Zach and the rest of the team were live on the air, of course, as Hurricane Idalia made landfall. And that was in Keaton Beach in Taylor County around 745 this morning. The storm at that time measured a Category 3 hurricane. It has since, of course, weakened as it moves across the top of our state and south of Georgia. I want you to take a look at this, though. As the conditions in the Big Bend area became extremely dangerous, you're looking at the high floodwaters here at the Steenhatchee Marina. You can see so much of this area underwater. We're talking about deep water too. Yeah, Tammy, those images very, very impressive to see right there. Crews are on the ground around the Big Bend area at this hour, helping clear up and assess the damage. FEMA Administrator Dean Criswell says she's actually on her way to Florida and will tour damage sites with Governor DeSantis on Thursday. And I can be able to report back to the president exactly what I see, what we think the needs might be and where the federal family can continue to assist. Now, due to the massive flooding brought on by then Hurricane Adalia, now it's a tropical storm mm. on Florida's west coast, rescue efforts are now underway. Spectrum News 13's Nicole Griffin, she is joining us live right now in our newsroom. Nicole, where exactly are these rescue efforts happening? Tammy and Curtis, from Pinellas to Pasco County, reports are pouring in of people needing to be rescued from their homes. According to the city of St. Pete, they've already rescued over 75 people today in high flood areas. It's a similar situation in Tarpon Springs and in Hudson. The Sea Ranch neighborhood in Hudson was one of the hardest hit, and even though residents there were ordered to evacuate two days ago, many decided to stay. However, once those floodwaters started rising up to their homes, they changed their minds, choosing to leave on high water rescue vehicles. They stopped right in front of our house. So I says, are you going or not? <laughs> I says, I don't want to stay. I said, it's flooding. I said, we've got more than enough insurance because I just got all my insurance paid up. So I, I said, great. I said, we'll take that and let it go. I said, you're going to have to let everything go. Many on the coast faced that painful realization today, needing to put their own safety ahead of their homes and belongings. Despite dangerous conditions, rescue teams are conducting difficult operations to make sure they can get as many people as possible to dry land. We spoke to Pasco County Sheriff Chris Noko about what they're seeing out there. Found one woman. She had called 911, waving us down. We were able to get her on the truck, get her medication. Then the next door neighbors saw us. They turn around and say, hey, can you get us now too? 
One clear message is being sent from rescue crews all across the West Coast. They will stay out there as long as people need to be saved to help with those rescue efforts. The Pinellas County Sheriff is asking that anyone that does not absolutely need to be out stay off the roads. Live in the newsroom, Nicole Griffin, Spectrum News. Thank you, Nicole. Well, the Tampa Bay area is really seeing intense flooding from Hurricane Adalia, now tropical storm. This video you're looking at over my shoulder, this is from the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. You can see the roadways are underwater. This is a look at the St. Pete Pier area. Many of you have probably traveled to this area and visited it. It's a big tourist spot. This is video from the St. Petersburg Police Department. The pier is currently closed due to the high water levels here. If you approach standing water on the roadway, no matter where you are, remember to stop, turn around, and never attempt to walk or drive through it. The Volusia County Sheriff's Office and Edgewater Police, they are sending a strike team to hurricane damage Taylor County. And one officer's mother lives there and will help them as she continues to pick up the pieces. Yeah, Spectrum News 13's Greg Pallone, he is live tonight in Volusia County. And Greg, Taylor County called and asked for their help, it seems. They did, uh, Curtis and Tammy, and Sheriff Chitwood and his team of volunteers is answering the call. The good Lord spared us, and now it's our turn to repay the favor. Sheriff Chipwood says 12 deputies volunteered to head to Perry, Florida for a week to help out in that devastated area. Plus, five Edgewater police officers have volunteered to go. They're bringing resources like armored vehicles, airboats, generators, and other heavy equipment to help with rescues and cleanup efforts. Jody Tillman is the director of Big Bend Technical College in Perry. Her school sustained some damage from the hurricane, and 100-year-old trees were uprooted. Well, she's going to house and feed these deputies and officers during their stay. Her son, Chaz, Geiger is an Edgewater police officer who is part of the strike team. It means a lot. I said it's a small rural county. They're overwhelmed. There's been so much devastation. Sheriff Chitwood says he has another team on standby should the help be needed into a second week. Meantime, we've learned Brevard County is heading to the devastated areas as well. Palm Bay Fire Rescue, the County Fire Department, Melbourne Fire, as well as Satellite Beach Fire, all part of a big strike team to go. Also, the Sheriff's Office has formed their own strike team. They are headed over there as well. Live in Volusia County, Greg Pallone, Spectrum News 13. All right, Greg, thank you so much for that live report. Our coverage of the aftermath of Hurricane Adalia doesn't stop here. If you happen to step away from your TV, be sure to take your phone, your tablet with you because our live stream access is available to all on the Spectrum News app during this time. Be sure to download it now from the Apple app or Google Play Store. All right, federal aid is on the way to the state of Florida. How the government is preparing to help and where they're focusing their efforts now that the hurricane, which is now Tropical Storm, has moved away from our state. We are staying on top of this. We know that this is going to impact a lot of people. And even over the next few days, let's check in again with Zach. Yeah, the rain and the storm itself may be over for central Florida, but the stories of recovery and resilience certainly are not. When we come back, we'll take a look at the forecast for the next couple of days, that recovery forecast, and we'll tell you more stories of Hurricane Idalia's path. Come on back. Spectrum News is your source for continuing Idalia coverage. just have a love of history. It really started from high school. There was a historical event that I learned about on the news that changed everything for me. I just felt like somebody was pushing me that you need to be a journalist. You're a journalist, you're a recorder of history here in Central Florida. People are very excited to teach you and to share. Every day it's something new. That's the beauty of being in news, which is why I've never had any other job except for this. At Spectrum, we know how much you depend on the reliability of our products and services. 
Now, we've taken a new step forward in reliability by identifying potential service issues before they become a problem. If you're affected, we'll contact you and help schedule a free service appointment with one of our expert technicians. The proactive maintenance of our network is one of the many reasons Spectrum delivers the most reliable internet speeds in the nation. Spectrum, keeping you connected. When I never graduated from high school, I realized I wanted to go back to school because I didn't want to work these back-breaking jobs the rest of my life. With the help of my father and having my son, that was all the motivation that I needed to come back to school. I felt accomplished. It made me feel that I could take on whatever challenges life throws at you. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. This hurricane season, stay informed and prepared with the Spectrum News app. Get up-to-the-minute information from your weather experts live, Clystron 13 radar, and set up essential alerts when you need them most. Spectrum News, your community connection, available on the App Store and Google Play. Our community is top of mind when it comes to storms that may be moving into Central Florida. We want to make sure that you're prepared, not scared, and we'll ride out the storm together as a community. Watch the Spectrum News 13 weather experts exclusively on Spectrum. Welcome back here for continuing coverage of what is now Tropical Storm Idalia. I'm meteorologist Zach Kobe. Thank you so much for sticking with us tonight. Let's get you live outside in downtown Orlando where, wow, you've seen a, a little bit of everything today. Um, we had a bit of clouds, a bit of rain, some strong winds gusting up to 40 miles per hour at times. And now look at that on the horizon looking out west. Just a hint of some sunlight, some daylight as as we begin to say goodbye to the racing clouds of what is now Tropical Storm Idalia. All right, so Central Florida, what are the impacts as we move our way into this evening? Well, a couple of showers and storms may continue to linger in the areas. Right now, we're still tracking a decent clip of showers working their way out of Polk County. We'll go ahead and put a pause on this and put a little bit of a track. Again, you can see that uh, kind of line working its way towards Kissimmee and portions of northern Osceola County. This will likely continue for the next couple of hours, this little line of activity sliding its way east. I want to pause it here at 9 o'clock and show you but that by the time the sun sets, we lose a little bit of daytime heating and the atmosphere overall is going to be a bit more conducive to dry us out. That's some good news, but not completely. OK, as we head into the overnight hours, as long as we still have that west wind, we still could create a couple of new little bands here, uh, which is an indirect impact from Idalia. It's not a wind or, or rain band from Edalia specifically, but it will be driving that westerly flow. We also are finally done with the tropical storm alerts, but we do have these wind advisories in place through 7 p.m. It's pretty gusty right now, 36 in Daytona, 36 in New Smyrna, 45 a mile per hour gusts there in Melbourne. I do suspect those winds will come down as we head through the overnight hours. Guys, coming up, we'll talk more about the seven-day forecast, especially heading into this long holiday weekend. I think we may be in for a treat, too. So we'll talk more about, uh, you know, maybe some better weather on the horizon that's coming up in about eight minutes. We like the sound of that. I sure yep. do. I know a lot of people do. All right. Thank you so much, Zach. We appreciate it. As Idalia moves away from us here in Florida, people across the south are getting ready for the next phase of this storm. They are. This is a look at the storm earlier as it made landfall. States of emergency are in place in Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. All three states activated its emergency response centers to help mobilize resources like food, water, generators, and National Guard troops. FEMA is is pledging to help people in need as they recover from this storm. Okay, so take a look at this bird's eye view of Hurricane Idalia. Now this footage NASA shared from on board the International Space Station. Pretty impressive right here as the storm of course made a landfall in Taylor County. This was Wednesday morning. 
storm causing some damage here at the governor's mansion in Tallahassee. First Lady Casey DeSantis tweeted out this photo of a 100 year old oak tree. It tumbled over during the high winds. She says her and her three children were home at the time. No one was hurt. President Joe Biden at the White House outlining the federal response to Hurricane Idalia and ongoing efforts in Hawaii following the Maui fires. So many disasters. He announced $95 million will be going to restore Hawaii's electric grid. Spectrum News 13's Karina Capabianca has the very latest now from Washington, D.C. President Joe Biden in Washington Wednesday meeting with his cabinet to discuss disaster recovery efforts. The White House also says more than 1,500 federal personnel are on the ground in states impacted by Edalia. There are also 540 urban search and rescue personnel in place. As of Tuesday, FEMA Administrator Criswell said the disaster relief fund is down to $3.4 billion, but FEMA will prioritize funding for critical response efforts to Edalia, the Maui fires, and other future extreme weather events without interruption. The president has also been in contact with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. The governor currently has no unmet needs, um, but as we begin to assess, right, as the governor assesses and as I get on the ground tomorrow to assess, we'll see what additional needs might be there and if any of those resources need to be employed or we need to move more into the area. The Biden administration says there are also more than 1,000 federal personnel in Maui following the deadly wildfire. Biden surveyed the damage there earlier this month. He vowed to help rebuild in a way that is respectful to the people of Maui and their culture. We're not going to turn this into a new land grab. We're not trying to have see multi-million dollar homes on the beach. We want to restore that part of the island like it was before. A big part of of that recovery effort, restoring the electric grid. He says $95 million from the bipartisan infrastructure law will be heading their way. It means investments to make sure electricity can continue to reach homes, hospitals, water stations, even during intense storms. There's no cost estimate yet on the damage from Edalia. Criswell will be heading to Florida to survey the damage with DeSantis on Thursday. In Washington, Karina Capabianca, Spectrum News. Trash and recycling collections are getting back to normal now that Idalia is moving out of our area. People living in Orange County who normally have Wednesday curbside pickup will move to Saturday. Set out your carts and items by 6 a.m. Now the Orange County landfill and transfer stations will reopen tomorrow under regular operating hours. If no one's going to stop for us, we're not going to make it. A long list of improvements on the way. The change is coming to a busy roadway in Winter Park to keep drivers alert and pedestrians safe. Keep it here. Spectrum News 13 is brought to you by Fields BMW. Stop by and experience the BMW X5 and X7 today. Here are your winning lottery numbers. hope in the midst of an overwhelming situation. Alcoholism is a disease that can affect any family. Everyone suffers, but there is help and hope at Al-Anon Family Groups. Al-Anon gave me my life back. I'm a better father and husband. Are you in an overwhelming situation because of someone else's drinking? Al-Anon and Alateen can, can help. help. Local and virtual meetings are available. Maybe one could work for you. Call 1-866-200-0033 or visit alanon.org slash hope. When you buy Spectrum Mobile for just $29.99 a month, you get a second line for free. So get one line for yourself and a free line for your devoted friend. Friend? Friend. 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 Or you can get one line for yourself and one line for your kid. Sold. Or both lines for yourself. I use one for business and another for business. I do a lot of business. Get one line of unlimited for $29.99 and get a second line free for 12 months. Call Flick or visit a Spectrum store today. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! Okay. I'm 
Pathfinder. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Sundays, take an in-depth look at your community. In Focus with Allison Walker, where decision makers come together and examine issues that impact Floridians. The travel and tourism industry is so very important to the state of Florida. It's a solutions-based conversation. I think we're making progress in the right direction. Your community, your state, your show. In Focus with Allison Walker, Sundays at 1130 on Spectrum News 13, exclusively on Spectrum. Right here on this Wednesday evening, I'm meteorologist Zach Covey. It has been a long 24 hours Central Florida, but the good news is Idalia's impacts now leaving Central Florida. Yesterday, it started off with this, a beautiful, beautiful first little band marking its way into uh, Merritt Island. And boy, oh boy, it made its mark. Remember those three severe thunderstorm warnings? We had them in Brevard County and Osceola County. Yeah, that is that line and it slid as far north is Daytona Beach. Cynthia Dobash snapping the photo of the line as it slid through there. A great reminder, you can always share your photos, your videos with us. Uh, here at Spectrum News. You can send them in on the uh, Spectrum News app. You could go to my uh, social media accounts, send them in there. But again, it really helps when you take photos and we can kind of put it to what we are seeing on the radar. Serves as some great ground truth. If you missed it, Hurricane Idalia making landfall earlier this morning in Keaton Beach, becoming the first Category 3 hurricane, the first major hurricane, frankly, to ever make landfall there out of Appalachie Bay. That has never happened before. Uh, and some of the winds locally in our area uh, were, you know, of tropical storm force. I'll show you that in just a second. When it comes to rainfall, though, really stretched between two and a half to three and a half inches. There were a few spots of locally heavier totals, but generally the rainfall forecast for Central Florida was spot on around two to uh, three and a half inches or so. And we told you guys prepare for a weak tropical storm here in Central Florida. The worst impacts were going to be farther west, farther north. That's exactly what happened. We were mainly focusing on impacts below 45 mile per hour winds. The highest wind gust we saw, 50 miles per hour in Kissimmee. So that is a spot on forecast for us here at Spectrum News. The winds will continue to die off as we head throughout the evening hours. Wind advisory through seven for a good chunk of central Florida. But again, those winds will be dying off as we head throughout the overnight hours. A little bit of lingering moisture heading into our Thursday and Friday, but we are setting up for a phenomenal three day holiday weekend. All right, now Link says that their services are back up and running after the storm. The fixed route and neighbor Link services are back on the roads. That's right. The Swan Shuttle in downtown Orlando will not be operational until Friday, though. Access Links will operate life-sustaining trips only tonight. Paratransit will return to full service with reservations tomorrow. Meanwhile, Voltran Transportation Services in Volusia are back up and running on select routes. Voltran's Flex Service resumed operations earlier today. And the SunRail is expected to reopen on Thursday. Crews are currently working to evaluate the tracks for any damage. Damage. Brightline says the impacts from Medallia are pushing back its service launch date from Orlando again. The company says trips scheduled between September 7th to the 21st won't happen. Customers with tickets for trips those days will be contacted by the train line. No word yet on a potential new start to the train service between Orlando and South Florida. Changes are coming for drivers and pedestrians on Lee Road just west of I-4 in Orlando. Florida's Department of Transportation plans to pump in millions of dollars to make it safer. The real-time traffic expert Jerry Hume tells us why the improvements are needed in this week's Extra on Getting There. It takes more than seasoning and the right temperature to make a good cheesesteak. 
It also takes love, according to Yazzie Dempsey. Just coming in, me able to make the cheesesteaks every day makes my day. Yazzie has loved to cook since he was eight years old. Food has gotten him through challenging times. I had a little bit of a rough childhood, just like most. And in doing so, I made, uh, made a few commitments, became a father a little early. But I love my kid. But to get to his job at La Spada's original cheesesteaks and hoagies, he's got to walk across and along Lee Road, where he's had a number of encounters with vehicles. I'm in hit right on over here, right going across the, the walking uh, where the, the lights are, right on down there. That's one of the reasons FDOT is planning to spend $3.6 million on Lee Road from Kingswood Drive to Addison Street. The project is based off of a 2021 safety study that found 292 crashes, including three deaths between January 2012 and June 2019. FDOT pulled more recent data for us and found since January 2019 until the end of 2022, there have been 166 crashes in this area. 13 had serious injuries. FDOT says the project includes new crosswalks, updated pedestrian signals. He hopes drivers pay attention to the new signs. If no one's going to stop for us, we're not going to make it. In addition, FDOT plans to ease congestion by extending eastbound left turn lanes and adding a traffic signal at the entrance to the Lee Road Shopping Center. It might slow down a little bit of a stretch, especially since kids get off the bus right here. Despite the challenges, Yazi likes going to work. Back when I was eight, my father had gotten me started on mostly, uh, you know, steaks, uh, hot roast. Like his father, he hopes to pass down his passion for food to his daughter. My goal in life is just uh, own a restaurant that I would love, you know, make all kinds of food at, any kind of food, to be honest. It's like a walk-in, you pick, I make and then try and pass it down to my kid. But to make that a reality, he's got to be able to get to work safe and sound. For Extra on Getting There, Jerry Hume, Spectrum News. Now, FDOT hopes to begin construction in the fall of next year and have the project completed by the spring of 2026. Looking at some of the hardest hit areas. The devastation left behind in the Big Bend area from Hurricane Idalia. You're watching Spectrum News 13. We live in a country where diabetes and obesity are our biggest health challenges. A suboptimal diet is the number one risk factor for dying of a chronic disease. Black and brown communities experience the highest burden of diabetes. Access to healthy foods are not an option. Something's terribly wrong that this is allowed to happen. Our health care system is not sustainable. This is actually where the hard work begins. Watch Exploring Your Health, USA 1C, Fighting the Rise of Diabetes, available on all your favorite devices. Special Mobile is giving you one free mobile line when you buy one unlimited line for $29.99. So I can get two lines for the price of one? That's right, for just $29.99. This is the best deal in mobile. But is the service reliable? Absolutely. Special Mobile is super reliable, coast to coast. Get one line for $29.99 and the second line is free. All with no taxes or hidden fees. Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for $29.99 a month and get a second unlimited line free for 12 months. Call 1-844-882-2999. Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Central Florida is a community where people quickly become connected with one another. When you watch your evening news, you'll see a reflection of yourself, your issues, your neighborhood. And I hope by seeing our stories, people become better informed and inspired to be involved in our communities. We're stronger together, and I feel lucky to be able to call this home. Join us for your evening news on Spectrum News 13 and on the Spectrum News app. Your evening news.
News, presented by Edition Financial Credit Union. Count us in. We're still assessing what is all going on on the ground in the places that had the, the initial impact. Looking over what Hurricane Idalia left behind. The storm hit Florida's Big Bend hard, and the recovery efforts will take some time. We'll stick with you as we take a closer look at Idalia's impact. We're glad you're here with us tonight. I'm Tammy Fields. And I'm Curtis McLeod. And for Greg Angel, we are staying with you again this half hour as we assess what was left behind by Hurricane Idalia. Our crews there are standing by across the state with a closer look at the devastation and restoration. We're going to get to them in just a moment. But first, the very latest on Tropical Storm Adalia, where that storm is right now, how strong it is. We're going to get straight over to the Weather Center with dual certified meteorologist Zach Covey. And a very good evening to both of you, Curtis and Tammy. And good evening at home, Central Florida. Take a breath. The impacts from Edalia are done in our area. Now we will have some indirect impacts moving into our Thursday and Friday, and we'll talk about that coming up. But here's the bottom line. The worst of the weather has slid north, but it still is going to take some time for North Florida to recover. The latest statistics, uh, winds of 70 miles per hour there as Edalia continues to work its way into the coastal Carolina plain. For us, though, just a couple of lingering showers. We'll talk about what you can and anticipate not only through the overnight period, but into our Thursday and Friday, plus UCF kicking off their football season tomorrow. What that game may look like weather wise. We've got that coming up. A lot of interest in that. Thank you, Zach. Well, as the recovery efforts begin to help areas that were impacted by the effects of Idalia, FEMA has designated Florida's search and rescue staging center to be at the Orange County Convention Center. Yeah, Spectrum News 13's Maciel Leva joins us live now from that location where task force have been deploying this afternoon. Maciel, I saw on Twitter that you were there as some of those uh, crews deployed. What are you seeing right now? Good afternoon, Tammy and Curtis. As you can see behind me, these crews right here are coming from all over the state and even from outside of this of the county um, to help out recovery efforts as a Hurricane Idalia, um, you know, brought some flood and some people need that help absolutely here. So we know that officials tell me that rescue crews are ready to help those affected and they want to make sure that resources are in place to provide a quick and effective response. As you can see in this video that I want to show you, you right now the command center is equipped with boats heavy lift equipment and high water rescue vehicles they have received help from several counties as i mentioned these counties include miami day Broward, seminole collier as well as crews coming from out of state from virginia ohio and georgia 80 percent of the task force has already been deployed this afternoon they started to head out around 1 p.m over 400 people have been sent mainly to help in the cedar key area the remaining 20 percent of that task force, about 50 crew members that are here at the convention center are mainly local authorities who are waiting to get the full assessment from our area and see what the needs are here. The main focus is always human life and the preservation of human life. Everything that we own, our properties can be replaced, but there's no replacement for a human being. Right now, we're in the early aspects of response. Right now, all about the human life, all about the preservation of that, all about making sure that we address vulnerable population. The command center is set to remain open for the next two weeks. They're saying that they are deploying assets based on the needs that they are seeing. Reporting live in Orange County, Maciel Leiva, Spectrum News. All right, Marcel, thank you so much for that live report. In some areas, not as hit hard as Idalia may have had a lasting, I should say, benefit in the form of beneficial rain. That's right. Spectrum News 13's Jeff Allen is joining us now live in Sumter County along Lake Panasofki, where fishing is big business. Jeff, any major flooding concerns along the lake there? Well, many people here along the lake tell me that they were actually down a few feet from what was an abnormally dry spring and summer, so they actually welcomed the rain. They didn't want any, of course, damaging effects, which luckily they did not get here, but uh, many people in this popular fishing community say they were actually glad to see the rain. Edalia may have kept locals away from this popular fishing lake today. Trying to get them to come back up. 
Oh, there he is, right there. But a baby gator popped up out of the water for Paul King, a transplant from Ohio. He was curious what a dahlia would bring, but he wasn't worried about rain. Need a good foot of water. That's, you know, that's how bad this lake's been this summer. It's been so dry here, it's been hard for him and other boaters to get around Lake Panasofki. Out of the channel and going up the river in the airboat, man, I mean, you can see the rocks clear. And, you know, man, if they're fiberglass hulls, you know, it'll, it'll rip the hull right open. He's hopeful the rain and dahlia drop will help and make the fish more willing to bite and keep people coming to Big Bass Grill, where he works. And he's been working more today, cleaning up debris like Spanish moss. A dahlia blew over the restaurant's deck. At first, when I moved here to Florida, I loved this moss. Now I hate the stuff. <laughs> it's been a lot busier than his average day. I'm done by noon. And as you can see, it's way afternoon and still working. But um, we'll get all this set back up and stuff and ready for tomorrow. But with Labor Day weekend approaching, fishermen coming back with better weather tomorrow and even some utility workers staged nearby, the work never stops. Yeah, we'll have linemen come in this evening. It's, they usually get around here about 6, 30, 7 o'clock stuff as we're open till uh, 9 o'clock. So you're looking there at that uh, normally where boats will be uh, coming in and off of the water there uh, here along the lake. but. None of that today because of the storm, of course, earlier, uh, the conditions, people just decided to kind of give the day off as far as any kind of fishing. But they fully expect, especially with the holiday coming up, that those uh, boaters will be back here tomorrow, and they certainly hope that happens. Reporting live in Sumter County, Jeff Allen, Spectrum News. All right, Jeff, thank you for that live report. Folks at Orlando's International Airport are anxiously waiting to know when they'll actually be able to go home. Many say they're hoping to get more definitive answers on their flight status. Now, according to FlightAware, departure delays average about one hour and three minutes in wait time. There have been 71 flight cancellations. That's just in the last 24 hours. The cancellations are forcing visitors to wonder if their tickets are next. Well, it's obviously a little bit frustrating. We'd just rather be told it's canceled or when it's actually leaving so that we could kind of prepare our day instead of having to sit here at the airport all day. I can hear her on that. No fun being stuck in limbo right there. Arrival delays for aircrafts average around 37 minutes and are decreasing as Idalia leaves Florida. Travelers are advised to check with their airlines for the most updated information regarding their flights. Our team coverage will continue throughout the hour and into the evening. We'll be with you every step of the way as Florida recovers from Hurricane Idalia. Our crews are spread out across the state, helping you get the very latest information on the restoration efforts. Orlando police, meanwhile, investigating a shooting in Carver Shores. It happened last night. We know three victims were shot, including a mother and her young daughter. It all happened at a home here along Poppy Avenue. Police say a man was shot and later died at the hospital. Hospital, a six year old girl is in critical condition. Her mother still in the hospital at this hour. Officials are asking anyone with information about this shooting to call the Orlando Police Department or call Crime Line. That telephone number 1 800 423 TIPS. We are still looking at the aftermath of Idalia. We are going to get a look at where this tropical storm is right now and just how much it has weakened. That's going to be coming up in your Weather on the Ones. Yeah, we're going to join right now by certified meteorologist Zach Kobe to give us the latest update. Hey there, Zach. Yeah, and the good news, uh, guys, is the bulk of the impacts have worked their way farther north. In fact, Carolina's right now, the South Carolina area, dealing with two tornado warnings, numerous flash flood warnings, where the worst impacts are right now and who saw the worst impacts locally. We'll break it all down for you in our continuing Hurricane Idalia coverage next. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. 
So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome. We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. From coast to coast, you've seen us around. We live and work in the communities we serve. Our commitment runs deep. We're invested here, creating good jobs and supporting small businesses, many of which we're proud to call customers. You count on us to keep you connected to what matters most. And we're committed to delivering you the best internet, TV, and mobile service. We're Spectrum, connecting the places we all call home. When I first saw Turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 Well, do you know the news? Spectrum News is casting for season two of the Spectrum News Challenge, and now it's your chance to see how much you know. Congratulations, what a big win, you pulled it out. Go to SpectrumNewsChallenge.com to apply, and you could be on the ultimate televised news competition. B, Turing is correct. Last question, cash prizes and school reputations are on the line. If you think you got what it takes, apply today. The Spectrum News Challenge, only on News 13, exclusively on Spectrum. Here we go, 541, as we uh, continue kind of wrapping up our Edalia coverage here at Spectrum News 13. I'm meteorologist Zach Covey. And yeah, the impacts are wrapped up for Central Florida. Of course, the stories of recovery, resilience the state will face over the next several weeks and months certainly are far from being over. We'll continue to touch on those stories coming up. Uh, here's the update. Uh, tropical storm Idalia now, but it was a hurricane when it made landfall earlier today in Keaton Beach. That's over in Taylor County. If you're wondering where Keaton Beach is, um, basically about 20 miles to the southeast of Perry. Perry is going to be the big town that is nearby. A beautiful downtown section of Perry, which sat right in the eyewall for a very long point in time. Now, locally here in Central Florida, we were spared the worst of the impacts. And your weather team here uh, was basically saying to prepare for a weak tropical storm, something of those type of nature impacts. Well, that is certainly what we found. Folks, these are the top five highest wind speeds in central Florida. 52 miles per hour came in at the highest wind speed central Florida saw. So bottom line, we told you to prepare for a weak tropical storm, and that's exactly what we saw. Rain reports, the top five reports showing generally rain uh, up there at about 2.86 inches in Ocala as the highest rainfall total. Now, as we go through this evening, we could add a bit more moisture as more storms work their way into the Carolinas. Look at those red boxes indicating those tornado warnings. Central Florida still getting a nice southwest flow, so we could continue to deal with just a hint of moisture over Overnight, maybe a few hit and miss showers in a place like Melbourne or Leesburg. Overnight lows in the 70s. Tomorrow, rain chances will return with that westerly wind. The kiddos certainly going to need the rain jacket and the umbrella throughout the day with those scattered showers and storms heading into the afternoon hours. Hurricane Idalia made landfall in the Big Bend area, but left a mess of floodwaters and debris along our west coast. It really did. Spectrum News 13's Jeff Van Sant uh, is on scene in Palm Harbor with the very latest on the conditions right now and the sights that residents woke up to after this storm. Is Bobby good? Yes. Frank Furman is on a mission. I'll check all friends, see if they need anything. Helping out his neighbors. Plowing through the floodwaters in his ATV. Yeah, I've been here nine years. 
never seen it like this. He lives in Ozona, a small town in North Pinellas County. He's never seen his neighborhood this bad. I'd say a third of the houses might have water damage, but two thirds didn't get water in it. People lost docks, jet skis. Water is about to come in the house. He shot this video as the floodwaters crept towards his house. Two inches from it, two inches from my doors it made, and then it started receding. Frank's neighborhood is in evacuation zone A, which had evacuation orders issued, but he stuck around. I sent my wife and kids out of here. They're over in Orlando. My wife's actually doing depositions right now. She's working. Right with that big house on there, they've got like four feet of water in their street. Lance Mingst is Frank's neighbor. He's right along with him to help others. I think a lot of people will leave next time. Oh, right like North Carolina and Shore on the corner of that aqua house. This is Gary Brewer. He left his house yesterday and is heading back to his home to see if everything is okay. You can see the debris, the leaves came right up to the edge of my door and stopped. As bad as it looks, these guys say it could have been a lot worse, saying they dodged a bullet. So what goes through your mind when you see this? We got lucky. Jeff Van Sant, Spectrum News. Over in Volusia County, they didn't feel many of the impacts from Hurricane Idalia, but dozens of people there hit hard last year by Hurricanes Ian and Nicole. They are still trying to recover from those storms. So many people, especially in South Daytona, the city saw nearly 22 inches of rain in last year's storms, causing hundreds of homes to flood. As we enter the peak of hurricane season, Spectrum News 13's Reagan Ryan spoke with the South Daytona resident about how she's still recovering from last year's storm. We were sitting on top of the couch and the water was still halfway up my calf. It was a terrifying moment in Elise Kimmy's life when her home flooded last year during Hurricane Ian. Three feet of water filled the house as Elise and her family watched their belongings float around them in an unimaginable situation. They prepared for the storm with sandbags stacked three high all around their home, but never expected the unprecedented amount of flooding that hit their city. That's how we got out of here. By kayaks and boats, Elise and her family were rescued. As she looks back on photos from that day, she hopes she never experiences anything like it again. I just don't want it ever happen again. It was, you know, a very scary moment in my life. You know, I, I got that grandbaby here and my children and the dog. It was, it, it was terrifying. The storm hit the South Daytona area hard, causing Elise and her neighbors to lose almost everything they owned. It's pretty humbling when you wake up and you don't even so much as have a toothbrush or a, a hairbrush and you're wearing your son's clothes because you don't have anything. After the storm, Elise rebuilt her home from scratch, repairing $130,000 worth of damage. And she says there's still more work to do. Almost a year since Ian's devastation, Elise and dozens of her South Daytona neighbors are still recovering from the storm. While most of her home's interior is now complete, Elise works to finish the outside, adding waterproofer to her exterior walls and building a drainage system. Elise says she doesn't think most people understand just how hard the South Daytona community was hit by Hurricane Ian. I don't think most of the people had any clue of what any of us have had to do and how bad it was. Before the storm hit, Elise said she never really understood the effects of anxiety, but now she says she shakes all the time. The minute it starts raining, it gets worse and you panic and you're looking out the doors, out the windows, and it's, there's no sleeping during a rainstorm. Elise hopes that once they finish their home, she'll feel some peace again. So I'm hoping once we get a break, um, we'll settle down and, and learn to love our home again and love our neighborhood again and not panic every time it rains. <laughs> Elise said she can't change what happened, but she can keep moving forward. In South Daytona, Reagan Ryan, Spectrum News. I'm Danielle Stein, and this is your Sports Minute, sponsored by Spectrum One. Now, after a failed offer yesterday, it sounds like Orlando City could be saying goodbye to Urchin Kara, signing with Samsungspor. Yesterday, OC rejected a bid from the Turkish club, who came back to the table with a new offer today. Urchin's spot as the starting striker was affected with the emergence of Duncan McGuire. Kara does have five goals on this year, but if the deal does go through, it opens up another designated player spot for the Lions.
And now after a remarkable career in college at Duke, UCF men's basketball head coach Johnny Dawkins will be inducted into the National College Basketball Hall of Fame. The two-time All-American is second on the Blue Devils all-time scoring list, and he's part of a five-person inductee class alongside his former coach at Duke, Coach K. The event is tonight in Chicago. And we're going to have everything to get you set for UCF football season opener tomorrow night. All that and more coming up at 1030. The Biden administration is keeping a close eye on the viruses that spread during the fall and the winter season. That's right. More on what they're doing to try to combat the effects and which one is the biggest threat to us. You're watching Spectrum News 13. Keep it here. An answer to one of society's biggest questions may be found in the youngest minds. Does poverty impact a child's development, their performance in school? The hypothesis that mothers who have access to cash raise babies with stronger brain development. The basis of the baby's first year study is really to understand whether providing economic support would change children's trajectories. Exploring your health, budgeting for brain development, available on all your favorite devices. So you're telling me this one-size-fits-all network upgrade is the best you guys can do? Better than that. It's the only thing we do. That's how we know it's right for you. Aye, aye, aye. Is that what I said? No, I think you were okay. I think that's a yes. We get it. Ask for the technology you need, and they call you unreasonable. We call you something else. Our kind of client. So go ahead. Be unreasonable. Medicaid and CHIP offer free or low-cost health coverage for kids and teens. These programs cover doctor's appointments, hospital visits, prescriptions, shots, and more. As parents, we get peace of mind knowing that our children are covered if they are sick or get injured. You may now be eligible for Medicaid, too, even if you've applied in the past. Enrollment is always open. Visit insurekidsnow.gov or call 1-877-KIDS-NOW. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. My favorite thing about Central Florida is the people, our neighbors, our friends, our coworkers. There's something so special about those early morning hours, and it feels amazing to go out into the community sharing real, authentic stories. When you connect with someone at a personal level, there's a trust. I think it's great to start your day in a way that you feel connected, especially with the morning news. You hear about the weather, the traffic. It's everything you need to get out the door and feel like you're ready to tackle the day. Your morning news on Spectrum News 13. Right, here we are, 51 past the hour on this uh, Wednesday evening. Meteorologist Zach Covey with you. Thank you so much for staying tuned to us here in Central Florida and, and trusting us with our continuing coverage as Hurricane Idalia worked its way across the state. This is what it looked like yesterday as Idalia made its presence known for the first time in Vieira. That was the very first band sliding through uh, the area of uh, Vieira. Andrew Zabinski sending in that photo. Tracy Whitehouse over in Orlando snapped the same band just over in the Orlando area swinging on through and boy was it photogenic. Guys, thank you so much for sending in all those photos and videos. If you took any, we would love to see it. All right, send them into us, Spectrum News app. You can also go to my social accounts. I've been posting a lot of social photos and videos that everyone's been sending in. Hey, history was made this morning at 745 as we had the first major hurricane ever to make landfall out of Appalachie Bay. That hurricane, obviously, Idalia, uh, made landfall as a strong Category 3 storm, but Idalia did make it to Category 4 status, okay? It also set a number of records. It's the strongest hurricane to hit the Big Bend since 1896. It's the eighth major hurricane ever in the Gulf of Mexico since 2017. So again, we've had a lot of majors over the past several years. By the way, along Florida's West Coast, setting the top five storm surge records. Yeah, storm surge, a big issue there along the west coast of Florida. It's also, like I said, the first major hurricane to ever make landfall in Appalachie Bay. 
We will continue to have some of this residual moisture. As Edalia pulls away, it will continue to pull a southwest to westerly flow. So the next several days, we're not really dealing with actual rain bands of Edalia, but we're dealing with more so a west coast sea breeze that is indirect from Edalia. So Edalia will be kind of driving our West Coast sea breeze the next several days. Overnight tonight, we drop into the 70s. Tomorrow, back into the upper 80s to around 90, feeling even hotter with that humidity. If you're going out to the UCF game, uh, there a chance of rain around 7 p.m. at FBC Mortgage Stadium. The good news is the rain drops by the holiday weekend with high temperatures hanging out around 90. Taking a look at your health right now, three respiratory viruses are expected to strike this fall and winter, one being COVID and the other two RSV and influenza. For the first time, the United States has vaccines against all three infections. Updated COVID vaccines are expected to be available to Americans by mid-September. RSV immunizations for babies and for adults over 60 are available right now, as are influenza vaccines. COVID-19 and RSV are expected to start circulating soon, but for the first time ever in the U.S., vaccines for all three threats will be available next month. Shots for the flu and RSV are already available. The CDC says people should also try early testing, improving ventilation systems, and in some cases, mask wearing. The White House says an updated COVID vaccine is important because immunity eventually weakens and updated variants find ways around immunity. The Biden administration unveiled its list of the first 10 drugs that Medicare will negotiate prices on. It includes blood thinners and medications that treat conditions like diabetes, cancer and heart disease. The Inflation Reduction Act gave Medicare the authority to negotiate drug prices for enrollees last year. Negotiated prices will not take effect until 2026. Assessing the aftermath of Hurricane Idalia, the conditions all the way from here in Central Florida up to the Big Bend where the storm made landfall. Yeah, our teams are standing by and ready to show you how you can help your fellow Floridians. Now let's take a look at what's happening in our community, brought to you by the expert injury attorneys at Todd Minor Law. 